Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Ask the Experts series. My name is Diane Southard from Your DNA Guide, and we are pleased as punch that you are joining us today and hope you will join us every week for our special new Celebrating Family History Month of October Ask the Expert series. Today, we have Katie Rowe Sherwamps. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yes. Close enough. Okay. With yeah. us from Family Tree DNA, she is the um, product owner of, of the Big Y, especially, which we're going to talk about today, but several products at Family Tree DNA. And um, she has, I guess, had a love of family history for quite some time. So Katie, tell us, how did you discover that you loved family history? Yeah. Um, so growing up, I spent a lot of time with my maternal grandparents. Uh, both of them would tell me stories about their lives and like when they were growing up and uh, their family members and where their families are from. Um, my maternal grandfather was the family genealogist. And when he passed away in 2012, I took over. Um, always loved reading and writing stories and genealogy is your family story. Absolutely. So what, what kind of led you into family tree DNA? You're from Texas, yes? Yeah, I grew up in Dallas. Um, I studied English, creative writing, anthropology, and history in college. I uh, worked in a couple of other fields after I graduated, and through my previous employer, I met the lab R&D director and the lab director for Family Tree DNA, oh. and I've been here since like a couple of weeks after that. <laughs> that's awesome. That's great. So I feel like that's the story of most of our lives, right? It's kind of these like <laughs> happenstance circumstances that put us into contact with people that end up changing our lives. I love those stories. Mm -hmm. It yeah. just makes you kind of want to get out and meet more people, not knowing who's going to change your life. <laughs> yeah, At least that's sure. how I feel about it. So I have been involved with Family Tree DNA almost since their inception and watched them grow and watch them essentially provide what were for many of us and probably many of the listeners today, the very first DNA test they ever took was probably from Family Tree DNA. So Knowing that, you know, we, all companies start with humble beginnings, I would love for you to share with us um, how far Family Tree DNA has come and let's measure it in numbers. So how many numbers specifically, um, I'm most interested in YDNA projects, YDNA testers, how many people have taken big Y. So if you'll, yeah, enlighten us, what are those numbers like? Yeah, um, absolutely. So we started in 2000. So it's been a long journey for, for us and a really exciting one. Um, as of the end of September, um, we've got a little over 9,000 YDNA projects, um, and those are comprised of surname projects, YDNA geographical projects, YDNA haplogroup projects, and then we also have dual YDNA and mtDNA ge geographical projects that look at both. Um, total YDNA testers, we've got 6,400 trying to figure out how to say numbers that just <laughs> slipped out of my head at the moment. Uh, 644,609 YDNA testers total. And we're really excited over the weekend. We just got the 100,000th big Y tester result. Um, we've had 106,003 big Y purchases as of the end of the month. So uh, about 6,000 of those are still processing and waiting for their results. But we've got over 100,000 now. That is so incredible. You guys, did you, I don't know, I'm kind of, I love numbers and I love math and they tell a great story, but did you hear mm -hmm. that there are over 600,000 people who've taken a YDNA test, but a hundred thousand have taken big Y, which is mm -hmm. a six. Like that's a, I was way, way, way surprised actually by that number, how many people have embraced this big Y product, which they should, but I think that's yeah. actually, it's way, that way exceeded my expectations. And we are going to just do a, a small, maybe a big little party right here to celebrate that 100,000 mark. Guys, it's more than just, in my opinion, more than just tests processed, but these are results that then kind of feed back into your research, right? Tell us about that process, how like each Y-DNA process test then kind of feeds back into the overall like product, I guess. Yeah. Um, so the more testers there are, the more information we have to make your results better. Not only are there more matches in the database, but we can provide better age estimates for when your haplogroup was formed. We can provide you with a better estimation for where your ancestors were from, um, where they migrated to over you know, hundreds of thousands of years from Y chromosome atom all the way to you. Yeah. It's, it's amazing, you guys. You 
if for those of you who don't work in science and haven't done a lot of science stuff, like when you have a little bit of data, you have a little story. When you have a lot of data, you have a big story. So I think case in point is the new um, new release that you had recently. It was over the summer, I believe. Maybe you can correct mm -hmm. me um, for your um, DNA discovery tool and how you've been able to essentially take a lot of this really complicated statistical data and spit it out in a way that's interesting. Will you tell us what are your top three favorite ways that you think the family discovery or the DNA discovery tool helps genealogists? So it's really hard to pick just three. Uh, I know, there's so it's an incredible yeah. tool. There, there's so much great stuff in there. Um, my top one is probably going to have to be the age estimates in the time tree. Um, so these let you figure out when you share a common ancestor with your matches, which tells you what time frame you need to look at and helps you find who that ancestor was. Um, we'll also soon be adding in your big Y matches to the time tree to make that even easier. Uh, let's see, another one, very similar, but I'd have to go with the group time tree. Um, so the group time tree takes all of the big Y testers from a specific group project, places them and their earliest known ancestors and locations on the time tree. Um, you can see who you're clustered with, helping you figure out who that common ancestor might have been, um, maybe break brick walls by going back further than you have before and determine where your ancestors are from. Um, so like with haplogroup projects, you can have people whose ancestors are found in Scotland, Ireland, Wales, England, all over the British Isles, all in the same project. And the group time tree will cluster you together and show you which group of those you match more closely. And then, okay, one more. Um, it has to be Globe Tracker. That's the one we released over the summer, uh, beginning of August. It's an animated big wide migration map. Um, so the regular static migration map that you get with your Y-DNA test cuts off either like at the root of your branch or in an intermediate level haplogroup, showing you where your paternal ancestors were in like the Stone Ages and the Middle Ages, several thousands of years ago before the genealogical record exists. Um, Globe Trekker takes that so much further. It goes all the way to your branch assigned from the big Y, and half of those branches were formed just 500 years ago meaning that you can see where your ancestors were from within genealogical times. Uh, you can watch your paternal ancestors journey from Y chromosomal Adam all the way to the Middle Ages or even modern times, and you also get to explore ancient DNA connections along the way. Love it. I love this. So just kind of to summarize your top three points for everybody listening. So number one is that time tree. And for me, I like to talk about this in terms of what I call your generation of connection. So it tells you how far back in someone else's tree you're going to need to go before you find that connecting generation. And so that's, like you said, for yourself. And then if you're in a project, which guys, if you're not in a family project yet, you need to join a family project. They are one of the most powerful features at Family Tree DNA. But as a project, then you're taking you're, you're laying on top of your genealogy records, this genetic layer, and it does this beautiful job of bringing these things together. So the, it's again, the more you feed the tool, the more it's able to tell you. So if you enter your earliest known ancestor, you enter his location and place and all of those things and dates that actually lets the tool like merge these two beautiful things together. I love that about it. And then the globe tracker, again, think about how powerful it is each one of you who's taken a DNA test, especially if you've taken big Y, you've contributed to creating this beautiful tool that helps you see this like wide, vast expanse of life. So what I'm interested in your thoughts, Katie, are in that globe tracker tool, as you said, you can essentially see these last 500 years, like pretty clearly, mm -hmm. right? It's laid out really yeah. nicely for people to see. And mm -hmm. What I love about this tool and about its potential, and tell me if you think this is reasonable, I guess, is that we aren't always going to have that paper record for 425 years ago when our ancestor was born. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that we won't have the genetic record to identify that person. Do you think that we will get to a point in our family history, in our merger of genetics and genealogy, where we're actually identifying an ancestor by their genetics. Like they don't have a name, but they have a genetic name. Do you think that's a, a possibility in our future? Yeah, that could definitely be a possibility. Like as we 
improve the age estimates as we improve the tools like the time tree and globe tracker we can definitely say all right we don't have a name for this person but your ancestor lived in you know 1625 and you share that ancestor with these other testers and you know eventually we'll find a name but for right now this is you know ancestor you know 12 or something <laughs> Yeah, right. No, like that we do assign them a name that is unique because their genetic signature is unique. And that's the amazing thing about why, even though we, why DNA is not a unique piece of DNA, right? You share it with possibly hundreds or even thousands of people, depending on how similar we want to get and how far back we're going, right? And yet it can still like pinpoint an ancestor, right? And give him a name. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I love Absolutely. that about it. It's amazing. It is. Well, let me just read a couple of comments here from some of our viewers. Um, mm -hmm. So let me show you here. Um, Mary says, I love family tree DNA. They bolstered my shaky research of my mitochondrial DNA ancestry back into the 1600s. So congratulations, Mary. Yeah. So mitochondrial DNA. Also, do you want to tell us a little bit about any, I don't know, what are you, what are the plans with the mitochondrial DNA product? We have so many plans for mitochondrial DNA. So we've spent like the last year, year and a half, bolstering our big Y and our Y DNA tests. Uh, the next thing we're going to start working on is that same sort of bolstering for MT DNA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our R&D team has been working on some major updates uh, through the Million Mito project. We're building the world's largest MT DNA haplotree. Uh, we're going to call that the Mito tree. Uh, the current mtDNA haplotry was academically built with about only 24,000 partial and some full MT sequences. And we have over half a million of those. We have half a million full sequences that we're using for the mito tree. Um, so this allows us to form not only new branches, but most importantly, younger branches, meaning that it's going to be easier to determine who your closest mtDNA matches are, when you share a common ancestor with them, and we can start providing many of the same tools for mtDNA that we've done for yDNA, including an mtDNA discover haplogroup report. Wow, that will, so tell us if you can, I know, I know mm -hmm. running a company and having product development timelines is like a little bit squishy, but like if mm -hmm. we were to look, if we had a crystal ball and we were to read it today, when do you think we'll start seeing these kinds of improvements come out? Um, we'll start seeing those next year. I can say next year for sure. Um, okay, good. Hopefully, hopefully early in the year, but but definitely sometime next year they'll they'll be coming out. <laughs> That's very very exciting. Okay, now I have more questions for you, but I want to just take a couple here. So Jim has this question for us. He says that he's tested at one eleven with no matches. He wants you to tell him is it worth it to go for big Y? Um. So. There, there are a few things there. If your only goal is to find more matches, you may not have any at the big Y level. Uh, but testing at the big Y gives you your unique haplogroup. That's your place on the haplotree. It tells you much better than, you know, RM269, IM253. You're at the top of the branch right now. That haplogroup that you get with the big Y can tell you where your ancestors are from. And it all... Testing at the big Y level also sets you up to be ready when you do get more matches. So when those matches do come in, you'll be in the right place to say, all right, this one, this one's a close match. We share a common ancestor 300 years ago. This one, we don't share a common ancestor for a thousand years. So I don't need to spend too much time trying to figure out who that ancestor was. because There's probably not a paper trail for that. Excellent. Thank you, Katie. And I think I'll add to that. Those were all really good points. I'm going to add to that that we are genealogists, right? We are in the record making and keeping business, right? And so if you're in a position to create a record for who knows what purpose in the future, even as Katie said, as new matches come in, certainly your record will be valuable in that respect. But also who knows really, right? What's coming or what we might be able to do with the data one day. And so I feel like if you're in a position to create a better record than you have right now, then it's just kind of worth doing, even if there isn't an immediate return on your investment um, with new matches or whatever. So that's just another point too. So thanks for that question, mm -hmm. Jim. Um, let's see, where else? All right, 
switch to one of my questions then. So uh, let's talk big why. Um, big why is unique, right? And then it's actually testing two different kinds of DNA. So will you explain to everybody listening kind of what those two kinds of DNA are and why testing them together makes big why such a powerful product? Absolutely. Um, so big Y tests both Y-DNA STRs and SNPs. Uh, STRs are short tandem repeats. So these uh -oh. are segments of... Can oh. you still hear me or are you... There we go. <laughs> Katie, there you are. Okay. Are you back? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, STRs, these are you know short segments of the Y chromosome that repeat over and over. Um, so this is what's tested in the Y111, it's tested in the Y37, all of the, those tests. Um, and those tests are also included in the big Y. Uh, the number of repeats that you have for a set of STRs forms your haplotype, which is then used to predict your haplogroup and determine if you share a common patrilineal ancestor with any other testers. So it lets us find matches to your direct paternal line. And then the other type of DNA that YD, uh, Big Y looks at are SNPs. So those are single nucleotide polymorphisms, which is the biggest mouthful in genealogy, <laughs> right? I think. Uh, yeah. Um, so SNPs are one particular spot on the Y chromosome that has a change or a mutation. Um, so through testing living people and archeological remains, we've been able to determine which mutation occurred first, second, third, and so on, and where in the world those mutations occurred. So that's what allowed us to build the world's largest family tree for the Y chromosome, which we call the Y-DNA haplotree, and also create features like the migration map, globe trucker, things that show where your ancestors were from over thousands of years. Uh, SNPs also mutate on a much more stable basis than STRs, which lets us provide much more accurate age estimates for the time to most recent common ancestor between you and your matches, making it easier to figure out when they lived and therefore who they were. Absolutely. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. that's really what, so understanding those two things and how they interact with each other is really what makes the big why such a unique experience and such has these unique abilities to tell us things about deep ancestral connections, as well as these possibly more important, maybe recent ancestral connections. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for clearing that up. That's always a good, I think, I feel like you've got to have this balance of like understanding the science just enough to really understand the power that it's providing for you. So that was helpful. So yeah. I've got a question here from Patricia. So she wants to know if you have tips for how to be an administrator of a project. So I tell people all the time that they should volunteer and take over <laughs> projects. Um, she said later on that she has received an email confirming she was the administrator, but she's not really sure even how to get into the site or what to do from here. What would you recommend? Mm -hmm. um, so it, if you haven't become an administrator yet, one of the best ways to start learning is to be a co-admin uh, of an existing project. And that way you can learn from the administrator of that project. Um, if uh, another way to do this, especially if you're already an administrator and don't know where to go yet, um, we've got a lot of resources. Um, when you sign into your group administrator page gap, uh, then you'll be able to find the resources in the toolbar there. Um, there's a lot of stuff there that can help you out. And uh, we have a conference that we put on usually every year for group project administrators. Uh, we've got that coming up here the first weekend of November. So if you're a group project administrator and you want to come to Houston, you can come to Houston. We're also doing it virtually for the first time ever. So you can sign up to attend virtually and the all of the sessions are going to be recorded and available after for about a year. So even if you sign up virtually and you can't actually make it that weekend, you can still yeah, at your leisure go through and watch all the presentations. There'll be you know, presentations about how to learn about managing your group projects, about using all the group project tools, uh, as well as about all of the various tests and how those can help your project members. Awesome. Okay, so Patricia, your first step is just to reach out to the customer service and figure out that whole login situation. But Katie's saying once you have that login, they've got lots of resources on that gap page to help you kind of get in and get started, as well as that um, 
big conference for just for project administrators. So those are really good resources for you coming up. So hopefully you can get off the ground and feel like you're making some progress in your in your family lines there. Um, let's see. Okay, here's a good question from Rana, Katie. Is it okay to test a son or is it better with a brother? Um, so really the, the big difference in testing a son or a brother is going to come with autosomal DNA. Like everyone's got their unique autosomal DNA. Um, if it's the same direct maternal line, then they'll have the same mtDNA as well. Um, but with Y-DNA, you know, a son and a brother are both extremely close. They're immediate relatives, and you're very likely going to have the exact same big Y results for both of those people. Right. So let's just be clear, Rana, that if we're talking your son or your brother, those are two very different Y-DNA lines, right? Your brother represents your dad's direct male line. Your son represents his dad, your spouse or or partner's direct male line, right? So those are two very different. But if you're talking about your brother or his son, that's what Katie's saying. I mean, you're probably going to get the same results, but I think best rule of thumb is test the oldest generation first, always. So that's that's universal across Y-DNA, autosomal, mitochondrial DNA, just because at every generation there is a chance of mutation. So you just want to limit those chances by testing those older generations. Okay. Um, let's see. We've got about five-ish minutes left. Let me make sure I've got all my questions. Let's do, um, let's talk about the big Y block tree, which is one of my favorite features. It was my favorite feature until the DNA discovery tool. <laughs> now I kind of love them both. It's, it's a very conflicted relationship I have. Um, <laughs> But tell us a little bit more about kind of the back end of your big why, like how often is that tree and I guess by extension, the DNA discovery tool updated? Is it all customer data in here or is there research data in there? Tell us a little bit more about kind of the back end composition of these tools. Sure. Um, so we do have a, a couple of different timeframes for the updates. Um, Discover those tools are updated every week. Um, so you get all that new content that's come in from the past week updated there. Um, the block tree and the YDNA haplotree, those are updated overnight every single day. Um, block tree and the haplotree, we've used academic and ancient DNA samples for branching on both of those, um, but you won't see those samples show up on the block tree, um, okay. but you can see them in the discover reports. Um, and aside from your placement on the block tree, you'll be able to see the placement of your big Y matches, your Y111, 67, and 37 matches who have taken a big Y and might not match you at the big Y level, but mm -hmm. they do match you at other Y DNA levels. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's a lot of, that's a lot of processing, <laughs> right? Like, so yes. I, I love, so, so what the message is guys is that every, there's always a chance every day that someone new will be showing up, right? So what I like yeah. to tell people is like have a kind of a consistent pattern you're following. Like, you know, maybe you pay your bills on the first of every month and you should also, you know, check for new YDNA matches at the first of every <laughs> month because there's always a chance there's somebody there uh, that you may have missed and and that might be, you know, the one to break mm -hmm. your whole thing wide open, right? Okay. Um Okay, this is a question we actually got in advance from one of our listeners who was uh, anticipating this miss meeting with you. And they're wondering if a whole genome sequence is ever going to be offered by Family Tree DNA. It's on the wish list for sure. Um, there's a lot of technology surrounding the whole genome sequencing that is coming down in cost. And, you know, we don't we don't want to offer a thousand dollar whole genome test, you know. Like that's not something that we expect that a lot of our customers would buy. Uh, we want it to be economical for our customers. And once that price point comes down, you know, we may be able to offer one around the, the cost of a big Y or maybe even cheaper. You know, the more yeah. people who do DNA testing, the cheaper it gets. Right. So I'm just going to put this one up, Nancy. This is, this is the answer to your question. Um, <laughs> 
that are there higher levels of testing than big Y? And that's the whole genome sequence. That's like all the things that would be the mm -hmm. higher level than big Y. Though I guess that's a good question. Like, is we had a big Y 500, right? Mm -hmm. And then a big Y 700. Are there plans for something else? Um, there, there could always be something else that comes along. Um, one of the newish things that's come out in the past couple of years is the T to T sequence. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the telomere to telomere sequence of the Y chromosome. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've got um, a, a build that we use, like a reference sequence for Y DNA. So the haplotree tree is built with the, you know, G, GRC38 reference sequence. Um, T to T would be a brand new reference sequence. And we've discovered about 5,000, I think, new steps from the T to T sequence. Um, we are slowly working those in uh, on branches that have a lot of testers. That's the easiest place to find them. And we could do something like that. You know, there may be, you know, something more that's discovered with a whole genome sequence if we finally get to offer that. Um, so there's always the chance that something new will come about for the big Y. Yeah, that's super interesting. I, lo I loved hearing mm -hmm. just now about the reference sequence because I hadn't really thought about that before. So that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, before we let you go, um, we've talked a lot about why, which is what I love the most about Family Tree DNA's offering. But let's talk just a little bit about Family Finder. We had a couple of questions that I've now lost in our long question screen. <laughs> about <laughs> the family finder test. I'll continue to try to find them. Um, but so tell us about, uh, so we, you mentioned something up and coming in family tree DNA is your mitochondrial DNA improvements, which we're really excited about. What kinds of plans mm -hmm. do you have coming up for maybe your autosomal product? Um, so towards the end of this month, we should have a new feature released for the family finder. Um, any male with a family finder should start to receive a Y-DNA haplogroup. group. Um, so Family Finder is run on a microarray chip. Um, that chip mostly contains autosomal SNPs. It contains X chromosome SNPs because that's the purpose of the test, right? It's to find th those results and use them to find close matches. Um, but there are some Y-DNA and MTDNA SNPs on that chip as well. And because of that, we can provide an intermediate level haplogroup with the Family Finder. Um, so this will typically place you about in the, the metal ages. It's not a haplogroup that's going to be as good as what you'll get with the big Y or for mtDNA with the MT full sequence, but it's definitely a start and gives you hints. You'll get the discover reports with it as well as your haplogroup. Awesome. Well, that's exciting. That's really exciting. Mm -hmm. So for Family Finder, um, I know you're like in maybe – maybe this isn't a date that you have planned or in the future, but so the family finder has, of course, the two parts, you have your DNA match list and you have your, my origins that reports your ethnicities. And we know that those matches are, you know, we're getting those every day. Again, you should be checking your family finder results for new matches, you know, periodically to make sure you're not missing anybody really earth shattering. What, mm -hmm. what are your plans for the, my origins piece of that? Are there product updates in the future? Um, I know you guys did a big update a couple of years ago. What, what kind mm -hmm. of, where is that on the priority list of the things that you guys are involved in? There's so much, you know, other testing companies yeah. really only have autosomal <laughs> where you guys are trying to yeah. juggle mitochondrial and why. So kind of where, help us understand the priority of that in the big list of things you guys are up to. Sure. Um, so we did make the the big update to my origins 3.0 a couple of years ago. Um, we expanded from, I think it was like 24 reference populations to mm -hmm. over 60. Um, so our it might be over 90. I don't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> um, right now, our population uh, geneticist team is working on the, the mitotree update. So we want to get as much work as done as possible on providing a brand new mitotree to get that those mtDNA haplogroups updated and bring more useful information to your mtDNA results. After that, uh, you know, Family Finder is always a place that that can be improved. Um, all of our tests can always be improved. We love doing all of that. Um, so we may work on a, a population a cluster update for uh, Family Finder after that, or there may be something else that comes up that we're just like, ooh, this is really cool. We need to do this. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, my last question for you, Katie, is why 
why is this work important to you? Why is genetic genealogy important to you? Um, so I, I've always loved reading and coming up with my own stories. And not everyone had the benefit that I did to grow up hearing stories about their family. Um, stories are important. Um, they bring people together. They connect you to your past. They help you form your future. And genetic genealogy helps everyone discover these stories, even if they didn't hear them from their family. Um, it helps connect to family that they didn't know, whether you're breaking brick walls and discovering new ancestors, or if you're adopted or you only know one parent, or if your family was torn apart through something terrible like the Holocaust. Um, I'm really proud to be able to do this work, uh, especially since it's work that I'm really passionate about. Wow. Um, since like both of my maternal grandparents have passed away now, um, and this is something that lets me not only continue to connect with them, but to help others find those connections as well. That's beautiful, Katie. Thank you for sharing your time with us today. We appreciate your expertise. We appreciate you and your role at Family Tree DNA and fighting for all these beautiful products to come to life. So to kind of summarize our conversation for everybody, um, Family Tree DNA is growing in its why DNA sector, especially as you saw, we hit that 100,000 big Y test processed and how that number represents progress. It represents more stories being told. It represents this uh, depth of information we can get from our Y DNA. And I'm especially excited to just grow that tree to the point where we can identify our ancestors in a really tangible way, even without records, which is, I think, it's the next frontier in my mind of where we're headed in genetic genealogy. And I'm excited about the role that family tree DNA is playing in that for us. Um, and I'm grateful for all the fabulous information you gave us about the mitochondrial DNA test coming up, man, it is way overdue for some Absolutely. sort of facelift, right? So <laughs> yes. That's very, very exciting. So congratulations to you and your team for all the work that's already gone in. And I'm sure the many more hours of work that will come in and we will all eagerly anticipate those updates from, from you guys then, as well as just at the end of the month for all of you mm -hmm. men out there who've taken the family finder test to be able to then have their Y DNA haplogroup predicted. Now, is that just for people who physically tested at family tree DNA or will that apply for transfers as well? Um, it will apply to transfers as well. We're going to start with people who physically did a family finder with us and roll it out slowly. And eventually we'll get to the transfer customers there. They're at the end of the line, unfortunately, but. <laughs> yeah, okay, that makes sense. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, as far as for more education about why DNA testing, about the big why, about mitochondrial DNA testing, about how to use the family finder tool, you can visit mm -hmm. yourdnaguide.com. We have a very uh, extensive blog. So at the top of our blog, you can just search by big why. You could search by why DNA. You can search by haplogroup. You could search by mitochondrial DNA for whatever it is that you're most interested in. We also offer a tour of family tree DNA, which is um, an opportunity for you to get to know your family finder results. We didn't spend a lot of time talking about that today, but there are a lot of features in the family finder results that you may need to explore a little deeper than you have. And so that's what our tour does. It really walks you through all of the different aspects of that family finder test. And then for those of you who are um, YDNA testers and you'd like to learn more, we're actually have a Y DNA course itself that you can actually take and we will teach you how to use your results and teach you how to use the family, uh, the group results as well in your own family history to kind of lead you down the path in a very uh, dedicated and um, purposeful way. So you're not kind of getting lost in all the data that can sometimes happen. It's a little bit overwhelming when you get something new. So we sincerely appreciate you joining us. Thank you for all of the comments in the chat. It's been fun to read them. I'm sorry we didn't get to all of your questions, uh, but we really appreciate you attending live and being here with us. Please continue to join us next week and the week after and the week after as we visit with more experts from our DNA testing companies. So thanks again, Katie. And thanks again to each of you for coming. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.